This is a standard PC, uh, no markings. Uh, you can buy this at any store, any computer outlet. Um, to get into the computer, you look at the back, make sure that all your connectors, when you lay the computer down, all the connectors are on the bottom. Um, these are thumb screws. You unscrew them, put them off to the side, and you slide back and then lift up. It just takes the case off. Now, this is the inside of a computer. You have a power supply. And these connectors come off the power supply, supply power to everything on the system board and on the components. This is a processor fan, heat sink, which is over the microprocessor. There's several components that are on here that we'll talk about later. You have your hard drive, you have your CD-ROM, and this, is, this component down here is called your motherboard. We're gonna take this apart. The blue cables that you see here are called SATA cables, S-A-T-A, -A, SATA cables. There's a pin on the top of one of these. You squeeze and pull. You see this pin here? What you do is you squeeze that pin down and you pull out and it comes off of the hard drive. Then I'm gonna take the power, which has the same type of connector, only just a little bit longer. We're gonna do the same thing up top, squeeze and pull, same thing with the power, squeeze and pull. The power is supplied through the power supply. The SATA cable is supplied through the system board. This, these cables here, these SATA cables, are connected to SATA ports that are on the system board. Again, you squeeze and you pull. Set these off to the side as well. We're gonna start disconnecting power to everything. This power cord right here connects to a case fan. They simply just unplug. This power connector connects all the power to the system board. Squeeze and pull directly out. It's got this little clip. It clips onto the side of the system board. Again, another case fan, unplug power and you have a four prong power connector down here. It supplies more power to the board. It also has a little squeeze pin and it pulls right out. Now your power supply is completely disconnected from your system board. Now we're gonna remove the power supply. Okay, to remove the power supply, there are four screws on the back side. Get a Phillips screwdriver. Make sure you don't lose your screws. Once you finish taking out all four screws, power supply should just fall, slide forward, tilt back towards the board, and lift straight out. That is the removal of a power supply. Now, let's remove the hard drive. Normally, there are two screws that hold the power supply in on either side, top and bottom. Let's remove the hard drive screws and remove the hard drive. slides forward and your hard drive has been removed. If you have screws on the on the other side, on the opposite side, stand the computer back up, remove the screws on the on what we call the bottom side, remove your thumb screws, slide the tray, open up that portion of your computer. These two screws will release the CD-ROM drive. back around, two screws on this side. 
once you've removed the screws from the CD-ROM, push from the back out forward and your CD-ROM slides forward. Now, to remove the system board, you can first have to remove each one of the components that are tied to it. Cables, PCI connectors or P PCI Express, whatever external cards or what they call add-on cards, you'd have to remove those. This is considered memory. Doesn't necessarily have to be removed when you're move, removing the motherboard, but you can. To remove the memory, there's a tab on either side. You pull the tab out, pull this tab on the other side out, and the memory slides right out. There's your memory stick. Now we're gonna remove this PCI card. To do that, you'll see the screws inside here. It's hard to get to. There's a cover on the back side that we have to remove first. This is not normal on on all on all computers. Some of the uh, the big box computers do not have these. Most custom ca cases will. Remove your case. It exposes all your screws. You find which one has the the silver tab that usually indicates a an add-on card. Unscrew it. Go back into the case. Grab both corners and pull straight out. This will take your card, your PCI card, off of the system board. Now, most of the cables that you see here come from the front panel. The front panel has a card reader. It's got USB ports, audio headphone jack. It's got a power button, a power LED or power light and it's got indicators for your hard drive and other lights on the front. So what we wanna do is disconnect those cables from your system board. Real simply, don't, you don't, don't pull too hard. Just grab firmly and ease them out. Just pull lightly and they'll all unplug and notice how they fan apart. This is your USB cables. Do the same thing. Grab lightly and pull. These do not fan apart, and it has the word USB, or has the, the uh, letters USB on them. This will tell you these are for the USB ports and the card reader for up front. Then this cable, again, pull from here, it tells you that it's an audio port. Came from here, and it'll tell you on the system board where it says audio. Now, let's remove the motherboard. To remove the, the system board, there's there are screws that hold it on. These screws are, are indicated by little circles throughout the system board. And that holds it in place so it won't it can't move. And once we remove those screws, the system board should slide towards the front of the case and pull straight out. Okay. I'm using a lightly magnetic tipped screwdriver to kind of help some people don't uh, don't necessarily think it should be used and if that's the case if you don't feel comfortable with that then then don't use them I'm sure whenever you're putting these screws back in that you don't uh, you don't over tighten them they just need to be tightened up enough to where it it holds steady the motherboard should lift straight up now that you have your system board out you can replace your processor this is the easiest thing way to do it I like to put the, the processor and the heat sink on before I set, your, set my motherboard back in my box or, or replace it. The reason being is it allow me, one, to handle the, the device a little easier, and two, I'm not confined in space. So what I want to do is on, on every heat sink you're going to find a fan. That fan usually has a power cord and it's usually plugged in to a power connector and it'll tell you. On the, on the system boards where a CPU fan should be plugged into. This is on an anti-static bag so that you don't, uh, you don't any static electricity to the system board. Unplug your power, again, just, it, you don't have to yank on them, just slightly pull them out. Um, there's a screw inside of each one of these that you can remove the fan. Some people remove the fan or you can just remove it by this, take that lever and you lift it up, get you a flathead screwdriver, push down, 
and it releases it on this side. Once it releases from this side, you can release it from that side and your whole processor should lift right off of there. Now, this processor is mounted, it's not mounted, but it's stuck to the heat sink because of the heat sink paste. Take your screwdriver and lightly turn it and that should break it loose. And that is your processor. This is the arm that it comes off of, locks it into place. On each processor, you have a row of pins. They have a pattern inside. You'll notice that there's four holes missing. There's also four holes on the system board itself on the processor socket. When you match up your triangles, you set it back down into place. That pattern will match up. You don't want to force it. It should drop right into place if you match up your triangles. You lock it back down and you're finished. So let's talk about the components on the system board. Um, this is your power, main power from your power supply. This is a IDE connector for the older IDE dr hard drives or, or CD-ROMs. This is a floppy drive connector, just in case you have a floppy drive, which they don't really make hardly anymore. These are SATA connectors. SATA stands for Serial ATA. If you'll notice inside, they, they're very distinctive. Uh, your SATA Zero is your highest port. It's your main port where your, where your uh, hard drive would plug to. And then you have your SATA 1, 2, 3 on the other side for any others. You have PCI slots. You have a video port. Uh, the only thing that fits in this port would be a video card, PCI Express video card. You also have a PCI Express 2, uh, which is another video card. These pinouts up here uh, is where you would plug your front panel uh, for your power switch and your, your front speaker, or the LED lights. This is your USB ports. You'll notice what it says up here. These are both your USB connectors for the front. This is a communications port, in case you have a, a communications card in the front. You also have, on the back, you have audio ports, which is your, your speaker, microphone, your headphone jacks. You have an ethernet connector for your network. You have two USB ports here, uh, four more on this side. You have a DVI port, you have an, a VGA port. Both of these are video. You have if you notice this one's green and purple, this is a PS2 port. You can plug either a mouse or a keyboard. And then you have two more USB ports on the front side. Your memory socket, sockets, you have two uh, DDR memory sockets right here. This processor is an AMD processor. You can tell because it says AM3 or AM2 Plus. This is your processor socket. These are the mounts for your heat sink. This is your gigabyte motherboard. This is a chipset. Uh, heat sink. It keeps your, your chi chipset cold uh, or cool. Um, then you have a variety of capacitors and, um, and resistors and different little chips on the board that'll help you. This is called a CMOS battery. You have your audio port. Uh, that's basic, the basic components of a system board. And, and all system boards uh, are different. Some of them won't have a floppy. Um, uh, pro, um, port. Some some of them will not have an IDE port anymore. Everything's going to SATA drives. You may not have a PCI. I mean a PCI Express connector anymore. You may just have the PCI 2. Uh, you may not even have any PCI connectors. This is your four port power connector, uh, which which supplies power to the processor and all the ports in the back here. Uh, this power connector supplies ports to, to power to everything else. And that's basically the components. You have uh, you have fans to plug in here on either side. This is right here for SPDIF is is um, surround sound I/O right here. Another audio port, and that's your, that's your basic component. Now that we have everything apart, we're going to put everything back together. We have our processor back in, and it's locked down. Um, the good thing to remember is the paste that you see on here. Anytime you're putting it, putting a, a processor back on, you want to add uh, some type of thermal paste back on between the processor and the and the heatsink itself to kind of keep that that section cool. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this all the way back around just like we had it and we're gonna set it back in place. We're gonna turn it and we're gonna make sure that it's locked down on this side here. So when we turn it back, the other side, this portion, we have to push down on just a little bit to where it locks into place. Now that we've got this pushed down on both sides, we're gonna lock the lever in place and that keeps this from moving. Now we take our power connector, four port power connector. It's got the little slide so it tells you which way it's supposed to go and it slides all the way down to the bottom till you hear it connect. Now that we have this in place, we can add our memory back as well. The memory can go in on the outside just as, just as easy as it can on the inside. So we want to line up the grooves with the grooves that are in the, in the system boards themselves. So you want to make sure that the grooves match up before you insert it. We want to make sure our tabs are open on both sides. There's a rail that it goes into here and here and then you want to push down on both sides firmly until you hear it click. If you have two, you can put it on either one of them. If you have an additional memory, you can add that to it as well. This just has a single stick of memory in it. And we'll get into that further in another video, what's, what type of memory and what type of slot. So now we're ready to put this back into the system board and right back into the, uh, into the computer. So we take our case like we had before. It's empty and we wanna add the system board back in. So we're gonna lay it back down. We're gonna put the motherboard, the, the motherboard back in. Notice on the back, how you have your holes aligned where each one of the components go and it tells you where the keyboard or mouse and it tells you all the other things and we wanna align the back of these with the ports that are on the back of this. Now anytime you buy a system board, this plate pops in and pops out. So it doesn't matter if you have a generic case and a generic motherboard, you can pop this portion of the case out and put the one that comes with your new board in so it matches up. So let's set our case back down. You wanna take your system board, make sure that your components are facing the back. You wanna go in at an angle, moving all your cables out of the way. You wanna make sure that it matches up with all your components in the back. Make sure that nothing is poked out. Make sure that you're all in the right place. And you want to make sure that you can see your screw holes and that they're matched up as well. Again, when you're putting your screws back in, you don't have to, to bear down on them. Just make sure that they're snug. Make sure that the system board will not move doesn't jump because as you plug components into it you don't want it to shift the ones back here by the by the back of the system board are the ones that are a little more tough to get to because of the lip on here just you can use a sc shorter screwdriver or an actual longer screwdriver just to get the uh, get your your screwdriver away from the edge there the main concern with the screws is you want to make sure that all four corners are tied down or anchored. You can short a system board out without with the wrong screw or with not having a screw uh, added could, uh, could add a short to the system board which will cause your system board not to power up. So make sure that you don't have anything except for the brass inserts underneath where you're screwing these two. And once you have your brass inserts, everything else should fall right into place. Okay, we're gonna add the CD-ROM back to your uh, back to your system. You wanna make sure your SATA connectors, the same ones that are on the board, system board, the SATA and then your power. SATA. So you wanna slide it in from the front until the front piece matches with the front of your case and your screw holes are lined up. You wanna take your screws. You wanna make sure that they're snug. You don't wanna, you don't wanna have to bear down on them too hard. You just want to be able to get them into place to where it holds the CD-ROM in place. 
Now that your CD-ROM's in place, we're gonna add the hard drive back. Your SATA connectors are on here. This is power, if you, if you have IDE power and you don't have SATA power, this hard drive has both power connectors. So you can add a power connector similar to this from your power supply if you need to, or just use regular SATA power. I'm gonna add this back in. And what we wanna do is we're gonna find our ledge where we want it, we're gonna slide it back in. Notice our screw holes are lined up into the slots. We can slide it all the way as far back as we want, or we can bring it as far out as we need to. The adjustment is purely up to you and the space that you have. Take your screw, line it up. Doesn't slide either way. Now that these two components are back in, we're gonna add the power supply. We will add a PCI card. Uh, all the other components are in, but I wanna add the power supply now to show you how everything plugs back into place. Power supply will go upside down. This depends on the, on the back angle. You wanna go in at an angle, up, turn it straight, slide it forward. You wanna match up your holes, your screw holes. Like most power supplies, there's a ledge on top underneath that'll help you hold it in place. So when you're ready to screw it in, you line up your screw holes, you screw your power supply back in. And this one you wanna make a little more snug than the rest of them. This has, this is all your power here. So you wanna make sure that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't come loose. Now your power supply's in, snug, it's not going anywhere. Now, let's plug in our 24 pin power connector. There's 24 pins. On your system board, it has 24 pins. Your, plug, your squeeze um, pin is on this side right here that locks and unlocks them. And there's a, there's a ledge on the edge of your power connector there. So you just line up your pins with the holes that are there and push until you hear a snap and it's locked into place. Your four pin power connector, again, your clip. There's your power connector there. There's your clip. There's a ledge on the a lip on the edge. You line up the holes. It only goes one way. It won't go the other way. And push until you hear it, until you, that clip clicks. Now, we wanna add power to the rest of our system. This is a power, this is a power plug that we can add for the CD-ROM. Add that power back. Again, it only goes one way. Power for the power for the for the hard drive. Power is there. Now, your SATA plugs, SATA plug for the CD-ROM, SATA plug for the hard drive. Exactly the same setup. The difference is this one's kind of a 90 degree angle, which allows it to uh, to be put in this way. The, 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 the system board, I mean the hard drive doesn't need it because you got more room over here. They do this in tight spots uh, where you can get to them a little easier. So our hard drive zero, SATA 2 zero, is gonna plug to the, to the system board. Notice the L shape on this one as well. There's the, there's the connector for it. I'm gonna push until we click, hear it click. Take this side again with the L shape sideways L and we're going to plug it to the hard drive push until you hear it click just like that and then we're going to do the same thing for the CD-ROM does it matter what port the CD-ROM goes to there's SATA 0 then SATA 1 SATA 2 and SATA 3 does not matter choose SATA 1 the next drive in line feed your cable up and you plug it against your CD-ROM. You want to try to keep your cables as neatly as possible that way you're they're not running into your fans and you, you're, they're not, you're not cumbersome and then you have your other cables that plug into your system board as well so let's start off with the audio cable and if you remember the audio plug was back here. Notice the pins on this 
have a certain pin out. There's, there's five pins, then there's three, and number four is missing, and we have five again on the other one as well. The same pin out is on this. We have five pins, we have three, one missing, and then five. So we want to make sure we line those up correctly and push all the way down. Now, we want to do the USB and the card reader. Notice the pinouts are a little different on this one. You have five, then you have four, and then the last one's missing on that side. So you find your pinout the way you want it on here. Slide it into place. Do the same on this one. Slide it into place. This is a power connector for a fan. On, on all power supplies, your power connector, the main power is going to go red, then black, then yellow. Anytime you plug in to another power connector, you want to match up the colors. And they snap right into place. This one doesn't have red and black, so we want to find out. We want to make sure that power is, the red is going to this power here. So we want to go ahead and slot it in place as well. This is a power LED, positive and negative. This is our hard drive LED, and this is our reset switch. So those plug to this port right here. You're gonna to have to find where the color codes on this, but if you'll notice, it tells you which where each one of them plug into. So if it's closest to this, it's on this side. If it's farthest away, it's on the opposite side. Now that we've uh, we've got our cables plugged in, connectors for the front panel. Let's uh, let's install the PCI card. With the PCI card, you uh, make sure it's lined up in your empty slot, and then you push down here, and it snaps into place. And your screw, you got to add your screw back to it. Put your case back on. Last thing we're gonna do is put our panel back on. Make sure that the uh, grooves line up with where they go. It slides right back on. Put your thumb screws back in, and you are back to normal. <laughs>